This is Eat Sleep Box and Repeat, and I'm delighted to be joined by Danny again, um, ahead of our second weekly betting preview show. Um, obviously, we've done one dedicated to the Sky Boxer show, with Clar- Clarissa Shades against Savannah Marshall. But this one is all the other fights, maybe around the globe. Obviously, we've got some boxing in Australia with the rematch between George Combosis Jr. and Devin Haney. We've got the return of Deontay Wilder, a few other um, really good fights on the undercard of those two um, events. But yeah. Danny, thanks once again for joining me. How are you? All good, mate. Excuse me. As you said, like what a weekend of boxing it is from like Saturday morning right through to Sunday morning, basically. You've got proper top level fights, you say, across the globe and not buzzing for it. Like, yeah, no, for sure. It's definitely a stacked weekend of um, action. So, yeah, why not let, why not get straight into it? Um, I'll go to you, Danny, for your, your first, your first betting tip of the weekend. Yeah, so first one is actually from the Zone card in Australia, and we've got two cards down there this weekend. Uh, it's for the main event, uh, Liam Paro versus Brock Jarvis. And it seemed like, obviously, Eddie Hearn's been pushing this fight a lot, and I'll be honest, going into it before doing a bit of research, um, I didn't know a great deal about both fighters. I'd heard of Brock Jarvis before, he was like a prospect uh, Eddie had been pushing. But I was looking at it, and the, the fight's up at 140. Um, Jarvis, in his last fight, was fighting at uh, featherweight. Like, fights before that, bantamweight, super flyweight. Hadn't fought anyone out at this weight. And he's up against Liam Paro, who's... I mean, he's not knocking on the door in terms of, like, the top five, maybe top ten, uh, like Walter weight, but, but he, he's, he's in the top five or six with two governing bodies. And I just think it's, it's such a massive jump, and I'm surprised the odds had it as close as it was. So I've gone a uh, Liam Paro decision. Uh, which you can get at five to four. I just think unless you're a serious special talent, you ha- you have to go through those levels. Um, you you, you can't you can't see it. We sort of saw that with Daniel Dubois as an example for the Joe Joyce fight, being built and built and built and just jumped in too high before he was ready. That's got this on, it. and then you factor in the jump and weight. Uh, I watched Brock Jarvis's last fight; he should have been stopped in the second round, but by a journeyman. Honestly, if it was the other way around, the fight would have been stopped two or three times over. I was tempted to go for the stoppage um, for Liam Paro, which you get a 10 to 3, but he's not really a puncher. He's sort of got like a, almost like a, like a Michael McKinson S style. He's very unorthodox, um, quite untidy. Um, so I, as much as I thought that was a decent price, I, I, I don't think he'll get Brock Jarvis out of there, who, to be fair, look, looks massive. I don't know how he was making bantam weight, and he's actually going to be taller and in terms of like breadth or whatever, there doesn't seem to be a great size difference. So I don't think you'll stop him, but I think that five to four is a great price. Even the for like bigger gamblers, getting Liam Power with eight to fifteen for me seems you know, even that seems a big price. So yeah, riding quite confident with Liam Power um for the first card in Australia this weekend. Yeah, no, that's I didn't really now that you mentioned it, I didn't I didn't know much about um Jarvis's last fight, but obviously you say arguably could have been stopped. The jump in weight, and I think the most important thing you mentioned there is, you know, the levels that he has boxed at. You give a great example of Dubois, Joyce. There's been plenty of others too, but yeah, no, I think at five to four, definitely a good price. I think a lot of people, <clears throat> excuse me, could potentially be tempted by the knockout, but I think, I think decision's probably a wise choice there. Um, I've got the three main um betting tips, but I was going to mention one more, which and I may as well mention it now because it's on this card and it's Sky Nicholson yeah. fights in her fifth fight of the of the yeah. year. Um, first four fights has looked really good. Um, hasn't yeah. got a stop- hasn't got a stoppage yet. Um, this is a ten round fight. I think I believe it's for the Commonwealth belt or some sort of. I think so, some sort of belt. Step up in class. Opponent's got a winning record. And to be honest, I just can see her winning almost every round again, but not getting a stoppage. And for Sky Nicholson to win on points is seven to five, which I think is quite a generous price. To be quite honest. Yeah. So yeah, yeah definitely. Just thought um, I'd mention that. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. I've fell into the trap of like, for like Sky Nicholson's last two or three fights, like believing her before the fight that um this is the one I'm going to stop them. This is the one I'm going to stop them. Checking the price, see it's like four to one, five to one, and then she just goes to a points victory. <laughs> um, so I've not done much research uh, on the fight, but uh, if you can get her points at like seven to five, especially as you say, a ten rounder where she's more likely her first ten rounder, she's more likely to look to conserve energy. Be cautious of gas and late, so no, that sounds, sounds a good price to me. Yeah, definitely, I, I agree. So yeah, and um, if you want to give us your your second betting tip of the weekend, Danny, go ahead. Yeah, uh, over to America for this one. Um, 
judging what you said in the chat a day or two ago, I think we might disagree on this one. Uh, it's for the Comian event, um, for the Showtime card, and it's uh, Caleb Plant, the one by decision, uh, which you can get at four to five, uh, obviously up against Anthony Durrell. Obviously, Plant's first fight um, coming up to a year since the loss to Canelo in the undisputed fight. Was was sort of tempted, obviously, the bigger odds are with the stoppage, but I was looking and the fighter, like Cleo Plant's not a puncher. Um, Darrell's only been stopped by David Benavidez. Um, that was a, a corner retirement. Granted, he's 37 now, but I think that factored in with the fact, as I say, it's Plant's, you know, first fight since uh, the Canelo fight. Um, I just, I just can't see it. I just can't see a stoppage this time. Um, he might look to get rounds, even if he is looking to stoppage. I think Darrell's will still have enough left. To, if he does, need to go into survival mode and and just say, right, I'm losing here. I'm just, I'm just not going to get myself stopped. He could do that. Um, so it's more one for your accumulators, your trebles, um, the four to five. But yeah, that's my my first tip for the the boxing in America. Yeah, no, interesting. I take all the points you, you you do say on board there, but I will I will have to disagree with you as you said there. I said in the chat the other day, um, I like the plant knockout here. Um, it's seven to four, which I think is a really good price. And the reason I do like it is a few things you've mentioned there. But if you just put a different narrative on it, obviously he's thirty seven years old. Darrell is very inactive. I know Plant hasn't fought in a year, but Darrell is very very inactive. Even these past five years, he's only fought a handful of times. Um. 37, coming to the end of his career. On the flip side, you've got Caleb Plant. Yes, he lost his last fight against Canel. He did put up a decent enough fight. You know, he wasn't yeah. he wasn't completely bamboozled by um, Alvarez. But I think he'll want the statement, to be honest. I think I, pe- people, in his head, he might be thinking, people are forgetting about me in the Super yeah. Middleweight division. I don't want that to happen. I'm going to come back with a bang. And I think, yes, despite Darrell only being stopped by Benavides, who is a big puncher, I think... Once you you know he's getting on, I don't think the. I mean, I could be completely wrong, but the the heart might not be there at thirty seven. He knows there's no real world title shots left in him. I could see Plant getting the stoppage. I know he's not a huge puncher himself, but he's a big enough super middleweight. And yeah, I think I think that. Well, I suppose, but whoever, if you're watching this video, just you're either backing mine or Danny's. Really, are you? I don't see very many people backing Anthony Durrell in this fight. Um, but I've gone for the slightly better odds, yeah, for the stoppage and. Um, I just the odds kind of appealed to me more than anything, to be quite honest with you. So, yeah, that's my reasoning. And your third and final, um, your third and final betting tip, Danny, if you could for this weekend's action. No, this goes to the one. As much as I'm looking forward to Shields Marshall, uh, Shields Marshall, the Australian card should be interesting. Um, I'm most looking forward to seeing Wilder back. Definitely, I think like he's 100 percent one of the most entertaining fighters in the sport. Um, vulnerable. Um, again, this might be one we disagree on. Actually, now I come to think of it, um, I, I was surprised they went for Hellenius as his first fight back, and uh, I, I was dangerously close to picking Hellenius here um, to beat Wilder. Um, just the age, the fact, that, and then you look at like he's been stopped by Gerald Washington and Johan Duapis. So if I pick him against Wilder, like you're you're opening yourself up for serious criticism there, but. I don't think Wilder will blow him away early. I genuinely don't. I think under Malik Scott, granted we've only seen it really for the, the Fury fights, you have seen a Wilder who's tried to box more. He's posted videos of him doing, I suppose, what his version of like actual boxing is. Um, and I think, obviously, we don't know how much the Fury fight's taken out of him. And I think also he'll be wary of, um, of Hellenius, who I think will be comfortably... The, the biggest one punch point one one punch um puncher that Wilder's faced. Um you can make a case maybe Lewis Ortiz obviously Fury stopped him, but I think that was more through just like a constant barrage. Um I think Lenny will be technically I think no one would argue is technically a far better boxer than Wilder. Um it's just what what the big one for me and what sort of stopped me picking Hellenius was the fact that he's a sparring partner for years and they'll know him and if he was a real proper danger and they thought it they wouldn't have took the fight. But with that all said, I think what I've landed on here is Wilder around 7 to 12, which you get at 7 to 2, uh, which I think is a really good price. As I say, I think he'll, he'll be cautious, uh, Hellenius, who will obviously in turn be very cautious of Wilder. So I think the first three or four rounds could look a bit just like a jab fest, to be honest. And then around 6, 7, 8 is when I think 
what sort of we all think is probably the inevitable will happen and Wilder will catch him with the right hand and that'll be it. Um, but really interesting fight. Um, really, really looking forward to it. Yeah, fair enough. I completely wasn't expecting you to say that. The fact that you're saying you were close to Lenius, I do understand, you know, he's had some good wins on, on his record and all, but I don't know why. There's just something that tells me he, not necessarily he's going to freeze, but like, I don't know what what he has left. If I, I know he has those two wins against Konaki, but again, that was a year, that's been like two two fights in two years or whatever it was. And Konaki, mm. you know, he, yes, yes, Lenius looked good in those, but he's clearly found out Konaki. Konaki has yeah. had a bit of hype behind him and he's actually turned out to be um, no harm to him, a bit of a, a bit of a nobody at heavyweight, really. Um, so, I'm going for the Wilder stoppage as well. So it's just a matter of um, the rounds that we disagree on here. Yeah, I look at you know, jo- Johan Dupas and you know Gerald Washington. If they can stop, if they can stop Robert Hellenius, Deontay Wilder can stop him at the click of a finger, in my opinion. Um, yes, we haven't seen Wilder in a year. He's been working with his new coach. I don't know what way he's going to come out. But if I'm Deontay Wilder, in my head, I'm thinking that you want to get... You want to get Hellenius out of there as soon as possible. Because, I, like you said, I do think Hellenius is the better boxing pedigree, you know, and better jobber um, and everything. But he's not a great mover, in my opinion. I think he, he is a bit of a st- bit of a, um, a standing target sometimes. He got beat by Dylan White. White wasn't able to stop him, of course. But, you know, if you're comparing Elliot Greywood like this, if you're comparing comparing Dylan White to Deontay Wilder, it's just, you can't, it's incomparable. You can't compare the two. I think Wilder stoppage early on I think he'll be looking to make a statement to be honest the way I'm seeing it is he comes out first round maybe you know downloads the data and all of that second third round maybe the fourth he just he throws his big shots and Hellenius is moving back in straight lines and I think that sooner rather than later he will get caught because you know he has been stopped before um, and he's probably he's, nobody's expecting him to win this fight so yeah I could see I could see Wilder getting the early knockout so I'm going to go with rounds one to three um, I would have gone one to four, but I'm just for the odds. I'm going to go one to three, which is nine to four, so better than two to one. Obviously, not as good as your seven to two odds, did you say? Um, seven to two, yeah. But I don't know why. There's just something telling me that we're going to get a um, an obliteration from Deontay Wilder here early on. Um, so yeah, that's what I think. And I know that you don't have m- 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 more to more betting tips to offer, but I'll quickly just mention. My last one, which comes in the main event, the rematch down under in Australia. Obviously, we've got Devin Haney, George Combosis Jr. And <laughs> if you go look on Bet365 or whatever um, betting operator you use, he's like 1 to 10 or 1 to 12 to win. This time, just after how convincingly he won the first fight. Um, again, I think that on points, it's 1 to 2 or something for Haney. But if you do go unanimous decision, it's around evens. So similar to what I was saying about Meyer in, in her fight, I think he and a unanimous decision at evens is a good price. I hear a lot of people saying that um, you know, they think Combosis will come out all guns blazing because he won't want to he won't want to just lose a comprehensive points decision again. Um he'll want to go out on a shield if he isn't gonna win. So he'll he'll throw everything he has at Haney and Haney might be able to stop him. Yes, Haney does have fifteen stoppages in his twenty eight victories, but his last his last few since he's gone to world level is just kind of kind of coasted the points wins. So I could see that being the case again here, to be honest. Yeah, and they did get on this unanimous decision mark. I mean, that's an all good price. Um I, I I agree. I think I agree with you entirely in your assessment there. I've seen seen a lot of strange takes for this fight. Obviously I personally can't see any stopping them. Um yeah, you hate to call any fighter like pillow fisted, but I think he is a bit, to be honest. Um, and that that's no criticism. Like Floyd Mayweather sort of made the second half of his career out of winning fights like that. And I think Devin Haney will probably be a fighter in the same mould. Obviously, you'd imagine Cambosis will come in with a different game plan, even if that is just rushing Haney. Um, I don't think that necessarily equates to Cambosis getting stopped down the line. I, I just I don't think he's got the fundamentals to beat Haney. Um Nah, I, I agree with me. And that evens is a decent shout in the UD, to be honest, because we they got fairly fair judging the first time. Um, so if if that's the case here, I think he and a unanimous decision is definitely the most likely outcome. Yeah, I, I I definitely agree. So um, obviously your three tips there that you've given us, if you put them into a treble, um, well, what's the outcome? 
pays you out at seventeen to one off. So if you put a tenner on, you get one eighty back. Um, obviously the sort of the big one you're looking for is that Wilder seven to twelve. Um, but the other two, touch wood, if there's any wood anywhere, I like to think are safe enough. <laughs> Yeah, funny you mentioned that. Yours is what seventeen to one. My my treble works out at just under um seventeen to one as well. So that's Wilder knockout in the first three. He in a unanimous decision and plant knockout. I yeah. think yeah, mine comes out at tenner, gets you one hundred and seventy eight pound. So yep. yeah, r- roughly the same. So roughly the same odds, but very different takes on the fights. So um yeah, one of us will one of us will be back next week with her uh, hanging our heads in shame. I, I, I suppose. Uh, maybe both of us may. <laughs> Could be, yeah. Listen, Nani. Listen, Nani, thanks very much for your time. And yeah, hopefully we've provided some um, winning betting tips for, for the viewers. Nice one, mate. Cheers. You made all the best. <laughs> <laughs>